You listen to Absolute Radio, and that is the sort of song you have to listen to three or four times to check that they sent you the radio edit. A filthy song, a truly filthy song. The Last Shadow Puppets on Absolute Radio. Bad Habits. I'm joined by Mars and Alex from the band. How have you guys been? You've only played a couple of shows supporting the album. Uh, it's been received well, the material. Yes, yeah. Pete. No, we've had a, we've had a, we've done about four, a week of shows. Four, four mm. shows. Four shows, and they've all yeah. gone all right. No mishaps. Yeah. No trouble. No. No. It's been. Been cool. It's all been yeah. good. It's been really good, man. Yes, I, I mean, it's been uh, uh, more than we could have wished for. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like I've watched most of it because people just spend their time filming gigs nowadays. So I've watched most. I've watched your Beatles cover on YouTube. I've watched pretty much everything. It's a, it, it, it's really is a strain on the modern musician. Yeah, it must upset you terribly. Um, so what uh, you, the people filming? Mm, the th- I yeah. don't know if I like. There was perhaps a brief moment where that. Mm. Bothered me, right? But okay, now, you can't like, think of it now because yeah. it's just everyone's just, doing it, just pretend know? they're Bon Jovi liked us, I suppose. You know I mean? In the background, it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like it's their ticket, yeah. They can do what they want, they've paid, they've paid me, their money. Pete. It's not, not about you. me, it's about the music. Uh, you, had about, a, yeah. you had a rare day off yesterday, guys. A rare day off. What does a rare day off in the life of the last shadow puppets look like? Just, I mean, <laughs> pretty, yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah, a fried good. chicken, <laughs> convalescence. Yeah. Bit of fried chicken, yeah. bit of a lie down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yesterday there was just some respite. Yeah, but yeah. we. Uh, I mean, we haven't had a, a wild week. It still requires too much yeah. concentration. Yeah, we're yeah. not in that. You know what I mean? It's still very early days. Yeah, isn't it? we'll talk about the album. The album's out now. It's my album. It's called Everything You've Come to Expect, and it's fantastic. A decade away. Why now, guys? Uh, and I mean that in the nicest way. Um. Just, I mean, this was the first chance we've had, really, to, yeah, like, we've just been, bit, like, Miles has been doing his solo records, and I've been doing, yeah, like, a and you know what it's record like, a year, year goes year. by, mm. a couple of years go by. But that's not been an opening until now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, Alex, you said that nobody was waiting for this album. Did that take some of the pressure off when it did come to getting into the studio? No one was waiting for it. I think that would in yeah, because I, I mean that's what it is to us in the first place. It was like our little secret in a way. Yeah. We escaped for a couple of weeks in the summer of two thousand and seven mm. and made that first record with very little expectations as to where it would lead us. Mm. Like whether it would even kind of be released was an unknown, and and I don't know something in that. Being able to approach it like that, then I think, was one of the things that meant that that uh, made it end up kind of working out. If mm. you know what I mean, so we attempted to sort of replicate that attitude as much as possible this time. And mm. yeah, I think the idea that no one was expecting it or waiting for it was yeah. uh, it was part of that. Give you a little bit of freedom, and I guess. Um... Would you say it was less of an experiment this time round, though, more deliberate? Because, I mean, obviously, as you said, the first time you did this, it was just a bit of a, a mess around and, and, and something you need to get off your chest. But, I mean, this time... It, it was a bit more... Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I know what you're saying. Like, there's... Uh, yeah, but I think there was just... There was an attempt to try and, you know, remember that it 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 was it is kind of the, the other thing. Mm. It's the mm-hmm. side project. Or, and, and, and I think we managed to... You know, make it uh, the the recording and the writing sort of almost as relaxed as it was last mm, time. You okay, know, like, for, there's various devices which like led to that being the case, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly there's a is a different, uh, slightly different scenario this time in that you know there what people we were going to take it on tour, obviously. Mm. Oh, well, you know, most likely. We, it, it was going to be released, so yeah. But I think you know we 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 managed to still uh, yeah not not uh, not take it too seriously. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, talking about devices to uh, help you relax, you were up at uh, Rick Rubin's gaff. What yeah. was that like, Shangri La? Wonderful band. Yeah, I've always wanted to go there. I mean, it, there's another this this uh, project is is Miles and I obviously. And obviously, because we're in all the pictures, um, <laughs> and then there's the, ma- the the brains behind it is a producer <laughs> called James Ford, who uh, we worked with on the last record also, mm. and he plays the drums uh, on the recordings. 
and he had always wanted to go to that studio, Shangri-La, mm. Rick Rubin's place, and we something we talked about trying to do maybe before, but it hadn't been, it hadn't worked out. So yeah, we were spending a lot of time in Los Angeles these days, so it was just kind of down the street from there. Um, and it's yeah, it's pretty like mm. idyllic setting, Pete. To be yeah. honest, you know, kind of didn't want to leave. <laughs> I feel bad yeah. that we've brought you here then. <laughs> it must be kind of strange having your producer play, play drums on your record though, Miles. I guess it's kind of yeah. get involved. He must be quite satisfied with that uh, arrangement because I imagine producers are sometimes frustrated uh, musicians as well. Obviously, he's got his own yeah. projects, but like. No, but he's great. And like, mm. you know, the vibe with him and us is, uh, is great. And he's, it's amazing to play with him and jam with him, you know. It's, mm. He's. he's Probably one of the best behind the kit. You know? mm. Well, one of my favourite tracks is uh, Miracle Align. Can you tell us a little bit about that, about that track and how, how that came about? Um, yeah. When we started thinking about maybe doing this again, mm. was a cup was like two years ago, Miles and I took a trip to the Coachella Festival mm -hmm. in, um, out in the desert there in India. And... Um, it was during that, like, driving out there, we somehow ended up listening to, <laughs> to ourselves. Our back catalogue. From, you know, like, oh, okay. the, 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 you on, know, on the, the On the CD record. changer, it just came in. It just came <laughs> yeah. on the old changer. <laughs> <Yeah. there. laughs> on the six CD just changer, yeah. there was everything on there. That, yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> so we did... Yeah, we listened to it. Then started. That's when we started talking about. Oh, maybe because we had been writing you, together you, you, around. I was going to say you, you've never talked about doing anything else <laughs> until you hear yourself. Oh, we were in a band, weren't yeah, we? No, Shall no, we do another record? Was, I mean, now we were working on something, but it was kind of probably going to be Miles's next mm, solo yeah, record. Yeah. And it was when we had like some mad puppets B sides from before. We were like, oh, this was that was pretty funny. Like, should mm. we, maybe we should think about that and there was this one song we had I know it's not the one you just mentioned but there's a song on the record called Aviation which yeah. was kind of we'd, we'd began to think might be like a Last Shadow Puppets mm. thing like yeah, the yeah. two of us I don't know there's just a certain quality to that that like um, reminded us of the you know the last record I don't know it was something like the there's this sort of inference of drama mm. there, like in, in the way that sounds mm. but anyway um miracle the line i remember first like sort of strumming the idea for on during that trip to the to the desert that we took like um just yeah to coachella that time and then it, it went away for a while it kind of went on its own journey then that tune i, I wrote some of it with a uh, girl called Alexandra Savio mm. on this record that I worked on with her. It was we were going to do it for her record for a minute, but then that didn't work out, and it just sort of yeah. came back around. And so when we were like I... coming to the, you know, pick our record and jamming mm. out the tunes, it was we had like quite a few tunes sort of left over, but then that tune was always like. Remember that tune you've got yeah. there, mate? Do you <laughs> want to we get that one, please? Do you know what I mean? I was like, that one was pretty good. Just, what's going on with that tune, Al? Do, do so. you worry you've got, like, a, 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 a top album in your brain somewhere that you've yeah. forgotten about? The you've, Forgotten Masterpiece. The Forgotten Masterpiece, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we'll stick on Miracle Aligner. This is uh, The Last Shot of Puppets here on Absolute Radio. Miracle Aligner from the new Last Shadow Puppets uh, album. It is the album of the week on the evening show. I'm Pete Donaldson. I am joined by the Last Shadow Puppets. Great strings on that track, guys. Owen Pallet is a bit of a blooming genius, isn't he? I've seen him in Final Fantasy a few times back in the day. Have, have, were you a big fan of him uh, doing his own thing? Or do you only know him as an or orchestral hero? No, I, I very much like the song Lewis Takes mm. Off His Shirt. Beautiful. Owen, yeah, he's like, that's probably my favourite tuner it is. Um, or is that the, the other one? There's two with Lewis. I like the one that goes, And the fire from my fingers. <laughs> That's my Stick favourite on. tune it is, yeah, <laughs> from Heartland. Uh, but Owen is, uh, has yet again bailed the whole thing out. Yeah. Sort of, sort of <laughs> rescued the sinking ship there, there are contribution. Few, there are fewer strings on this album, or, or, or they're slightly, yeah. slightly more subdued, I think. yeah. In, in, in the first record, but it, he he was actually in the studio with you, wasn't he? Which That's rarely right. happens with a, with a person who deals with violins and that. Yeah, he was uh, in yeah. the hallway on a grand piano, <laughs> lovely, drifting in and out with his ideas. Yeah, I think the string. Yeah, they're often uh, 
well, it seems like they're, they're yeah, they're often uh, an afterthought or something. Yeah. Mm. Like mm. Just, but you, this time, it, I think it was his suggestion. He's like, oh, you know, I'd love to come down there and spend a bit more time on it. And I think he, he's happiest working when you are able to mm. sort of wander down a few blind alleys. Mm. But guys, it was lovely having him round, wasn't it, Miles? Mm. Are you guys, yeah. when someone suggests something like that, are you open to that sort of thing, or do you do you have uh, a very specific idea about no, what the recording like, process is going to be with like? Something like that, and with him, it's like we're pretty open, and right. it's like we'd have a rough idea or something, and he'd go and work towards that, or he'd just come up with it, and we'd say that's amazing, or mm. should we just change that to mm. a B? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but okay. well, as far as having, yeah, I mean, that, that, again, like this thing kind of it, it permits something like that yeah. to happen. Like, and it, it wasn't just like, like, Owen was there working away, but friends of ours were down. It was yeah, when it was the doors like were sort of open. And, I've never yeah. really met a record like that before where mm. there's been so many kind of... People with some stress popping yeah. in with Maybe their it has something to do with the beach, or, <laughs> um, possibly, but um, rather than the songs... Wonderful stuff. Well, we're going to hit a, a short ad break, a mercifully short ad break. We're going to go for uh, Miser's first choice. Uh, can't help myself by orange juice uh, right <laughs> after the break. Don't giggle. <laughs> Keep listening to Absolute Radio and you'll hear loads of different songs by David Bowie. Just like this one. At Absolute Radio. Where real, real music matters. That was a tune that I've been sort of about six months ago. Mm. Like, uh, I can't someone played at me and I've just been sort of buzzing off it ever since. Mm. I've never really heard that song before. Yeah. And, it, uh, you know, I like the way he references the four tops. And, yeah. <laughs> you know. Isn't it weird, though, that you get to a certain age and you sort of go, well, I must have heard all the music. And then, yeah, and yeah, then you yeah, get to like, do something and you're like, yeah. oh, little am, do you know. Yes. <laughs> I am but a single cell amoeba in the world of music. Yeah. Um, so heading out on tour, you, you're going back and relearning the songs. Are you kind of appreciative uh, of your material 10 years ago a little bit more? Yeah, we've been having a giggle at some of the lyrics in the right, songs. Right, OK, but, OK. Uh, but it's it they, they feel like a di- you get a different feeling from mm. playing those songs yeah. than you do with these new ones. Mm. But it's it's a nice feeling, right? Okay, you know what I mean. It's like a, it's it's different. I can't describe it. Yeah, the feelings a, like a, there's certainly some silly lyrics on there, but you, I, I think you're sufficiently distracted by the. Smiles on the faces of the audience. <laughs> okay, right. I guess, and I guess, as you get older, your voices get deeper as well. So, I mean, I, yeah. I imagine you, you you probably sound a little bit more youthful as well. Uh, was it important to avoid the notion of nostalgia with your second album? You can't just reinvent the, the, the same one over and over again, can you? Yeah, but I th- like this one's probably got more variation on it than mm. our first one. Mm. That's definite, I reckon. Because you know I mean? you've been listening to a lot of like slaves and stuff, and you've been listening to a lot of like Kendrick Lamar. Though, that's what I've been he- hearing in interviews. And this record out. sounds nothing and like either, like either of them. <laughs> yeah. How do you bring? I mean, how do you bring influences like influences like that in? Is that important? Is that well, even I've, important? But, yeah, I think it is. But I think the difference, perhaps now, like it be, things, it being a bit later down the line, like the the whole notion of, um, you know that being influenced by a song and then and going and writing something like, like it has mm. sort of reached the saturation point. Yeah. Right now. So I think you can... Whereas that first album, we would... You know, I could name, like, five trees that we were definitely barking up, like one of mm. with the top one or the tallest one being <laughs> Scott Walker. Yeah. The you oak. know, and, like... <laughs> yeah, the big oak. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where this time, every you know, we weren't necessarily even on the same page with like what we were listening to, and it mm. became more about, you know, l- less about the sort of reference material, if you like, more just about our kind of connection mm. songwriting. But I mean, Scott Walker doesn't have uh, a. He doesn't have a, a monopoly on big uh, orchestral kind of uh, manoeuvres, so to speak. He doesn't have big, big, big kind of uh, big band numbers, I guess. So, no, I mean, you guys. But it was. I think it was more than that. For like that was a really important uh, discovery. In, I mean, just speaking for myself here, yeah, because mm. Miles kind of put me onto that. Well, not not kind of like totally put me onto that. Like him and his friends were into all this cool music that I had never heard before, mm. and we did like the the. 
age of the understatement and I hear like so much of that uh, in there you know in the way we were attempting to sing yeah the kind okay. of like pictures we were painting with the words mm. and, and like you said you know the orchestral element to it but yeah like um it was definitely you know as much an exercise in production that as it was mm. like in songwriting yeah, um, th- th- this album. I mean, it's 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 dark and it's foul, and I say that in the nicest way. It's it's a it's a spooky kind of you know three a.m. kind of album. I mean, is that something you were going for? It's 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 filth. <laughs> um, I mean, is it? It's not that. It's, I mean, it's not. But it, I I don't know. Maybe it's more overt. Maybe to us, I mean, it doesn't feel like that to us. Mm. You no, know, but as an outsider. Well, that must. I think. I think maybe it's more the press shots that you've had before. <laughs> before, yeah. you guys look like you're in some uh, like a like a Mexican novella, like you're the baddies in a Mexican yeah. um, telenovela. <laughs> Far from it, Pete. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're very much the good guys in this situation. Yeah. Uh, but is is this the sort of album you could have written ten years ago? Presumably not. I mean, no. you've been through so much. I would hope not. Like, mm. yeah, no, I think like, hopefully there's like. A... Been some refinement. Mm. Well, uh, <laughs> let's, let's stick on a bit of uh, aviation. Uh, great, uh, great video of this one as well. Uh, it, this was the first track you worked on, as you said earlier yeah. on. Yeah, and it was, it yeah, was originally was... going to be Mars's uh, first solo one for his next mm. album, but then it just turned into a yeah. And then it was, you know, I looked at him and I said, I can't do this on my own. <laughs> Bring pallet in. Bring yeah. me a pallet of pallets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it is. Aviation, the last Shadow Puppets on uh, Absolute Radio. On Absolute Radio, the last Shadow Puppets, they are back with their second album, Everything You've Come to Expect. It's out now. Go and grab it. You guys are both full time uh, LA residents now. Mm-hmm. Is that right? That's correct? You're looking very suntanned. We're, we're, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm see through. <laughs> I feel <laughs> a bit grey. Yeah, I feel like I'm blue. <laughs> yeah, that is weird because I guess you've been, Alex, you've been uh, out there longer than Miles, and Miles looks a little browner than you. Where have you been? Yeah, I don't. Uh... I don't go outside. I don't tan. You don't tan? Don't, I'm sure you do. Easily. You burn and then you tan. A little, yeah, a little bit. No, I, I'm, I, I'm a nocturnal creature. <laughs> creature of the night. Um, so yeah. Does, that, does, the, does, it, does, does LA seep into the, uh, the music a little bit? I suppose it must do. Yeah, mm. I think it might. Maybe we're too uh, close to the music at the moment to mm, me, yeah. really like pass judgment on that, but I think like... People probably think it, you know, it it it, it has it more than seeped into mm. it. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you can maybe hear bits of it, but I, I don't mm. feel like it's like a. LA records. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think LA records are the, usually the worst records. Though, you know I, mean? I suppose that nobody wants it. But uh, you, you're having fun out there, though, Miles. I mean, obviously you, you just kind of headed out there. Yeah, I'm, having a ball. I'm loving it there. Yeah. You know, it feels nice. To, I was up for a bit of a change for a bit, and mm. uh, I'm still enjoying it. So we'll see how it goes. Because I, I, t- I sort of see a little bit of uh, you're probably going to disagree with this, but I, I see a bit of boy and Iggy in, in you guys, in that you egg each other on to greater heights. Would you take that? Would you take a certain ten percent of that? <laughs> I don't really know. He's to be honest, be bowie, I mean. <laughs> why? You know, You're with, the aloof with, one with the lyrics and all that. Yeah, yeah. you got the six pack. So okay. <laughs> well, it there yeah, you go. There we go. Uh, we're gonna and the tan. St- <laughs> and the tan. We're gonna stick on. Uh, this is hardcore, which was uh, Alex's choice, I do believe. Ah, yeah. um, Check sim- that out. Similar. Have you seen the video to This Is Hardcore, Paul? Uh, we love the video to it's, This Is I, Hardcore. I went to Texas last week, and uh, my favorite album is His and Hers by Pulp. But um, This Is Hardcore, I'm learning to respect it a little bit more. And that video. Uh, when I saw Aviation and uh, what's the other track with the, the, the everything you come to everything expect. you come to expect, obviously uh, the album, yeah. uh, the title track. As soon as that actor comes out that car, I thought this is hardcore. Oh, the cool. video because yeah. it's it's quite um, it's golden age of cinema kind of like schlocky. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of work. I love that song. Thanks. Yeah, we but that, that video is something we talked about a long time ago, mm. it? and the, that tune. Yeah, like this. That could be a good cover. Yeah. That would be I mean, the coolest cover possible. It yeah. really would. You need I a very specific. The other night at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I, I said this would be the coolest cover we could possibly do. What a pull. The coolest cover. Yeah, I did. Wow. I made that announcement. People like, think you're so cool. <laughs> and you said something was the coolest. Like, yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, but 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 uh, but this is hardcore. It's 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 almost a bomb theme, isn't it? In many yeah. ways, it's it's a big there's a big bit of, there's a there's a few John Barry brass mm. stabs. Mm. Yeah. 
And uh, and it's just nice to hear like a song so big being sung with kind of a Sheffield kind of accent that really? goes in there. Yeah, and that's almost uh, that's almost Turner esque. I think it's fair to say. It is. The last shot of puppets there. Everything we've, you've come to expect on Absolute Radio. That video, lads, gives me the proper willies. I do not care for that video at all. Which one? The, you're up to your next LBF. in beach. We just had to channel David Blaine <laughs> for that hour and 15. So tell us a little bit about that. You, you you dig your own hole in one video, in the aviation video. Yeah. And then you're up to your necks in sand as the tide rolls in. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to ask Sam, the, the director. Yeah, it was all his idea, really. We yeah. went along with it, but it was... Uh, it's workplace It was volume. an uncomfortable hour and 15. But I, th- yeah. I think, yeah, with a, I mean, in my brief experience with the music video... The the best results are achieved when you sort of give up control mm, and like yeah. put your trust in someone. Yeah. And, and we uh, did with him. Sam for And, and look yeah. where I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <And with laughs> nearly yeah, drowned. Betty, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And there you go. Quite literally up to our next <laughs> yeah. How did that work? Because I I'm sorry to get into the logistics of it, but I mean the water starts coming up and you are buried. Yeah. I, yeah, man, I mean, we were, I mean we, were, we were about to drown. Yeah, did they have to yeah. dig you out very quickly or something? Was it a big rescue yeah, mission? we did, like, ten takes of it, and, then, <laughs> you know, there was a guy on the side sailing, saying, called no, Ken, we... his name was called Ken, and he'd, like, <laughs> come over in between takes and be like... Now listen, if you want to, when you want to get out, just shout Ken Ken, and I'll come and like pull you out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was, you have to give him double Ken was like a emergency. Double Ken. Oh, yeah. just one Ken. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got one Ken in me. One Ken was just a sip of the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was, okay. or like scratch me nose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going full Ken. Wow. Yeah. Well, but that, now, that's man, good to I know. mean, like I was really impressed with Miles in that shoot. Mm. Some of those facial expressions. <laughs> I was really getting in Hollywood the zone Hollywood beckons, there. baby. Yeah, well, yeah, is, there, is that something you'd uh, ever want to get into, guys? Because, I mean, obviously... I mean, the aviation video in particular is a, f- a fuller performance, I think it's fair I, to say. Because you I, give a man a kiss and then, I, you, then you're shouting at the camera. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, <laughs> yeah. He's really on one going there. off, yeah. I'm like, Gargoyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it was you, Fredo. <laughs> yeah. You broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> The, uh, the the uh, the the cutty parts. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm. Uh, you guys would be well I'm a lot that, less you? equipped for for the silver screen than right, my okay. counterpart. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> the, uh, the the contrasting situations you guys have, have both been in the last few years. Miles, obviously, you you spent a little bit of time in the last Shadow Puppets. Then you did went solo. Uh, you did the monkeys. Then you did uh, last Shadow Puppets, Alex, and then went back into the monkeys. Now you're back. Uh, is the kind of contrasting kind of um, situation you guys have, have been in it give you more appreciation for this project? In that, um, do you see something in each other that gives you a bit more freedom than what you've been used to? Yeah, I think. You know, other than what we said before about the moment you recognise it's outside what you usually do, you, you are, I think, you know, afforded a potential freedom that you that you wouldn't have otherwise. Mm-hmm. Even like just straight immediately, like upon that recognition. But I also think the fact that we sort of share the spotlight of it, if you like. Mm gives us a, a, a confidence with, with the right in to, to go to places that you wouldn't otherwise, whether that's like, I don't, I don't something that's more lyrically abstract or something that's more personal on the other end of that spectrum. Like, I, I don't know, I think just having like your pal there mm. helps you to, mm. you know, end up kind of, Wider, mm. than you would. I mean, fundamentally, Possibly. you just want to get wider. That's 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 the thing. Wide, I just want to get wide, guys. <laughs> uh, Greg, uh, we spoke briefly about James. You know, Ford. I'm all down the wing. <laughs> we spoke briefly about James Ford. How how important is uh, that man to, to to this record? Obviously, you worked with him before, Alex. But I mean, how how important was it for him to kind of pull you guys through? I suppose. Because I, I mean, this is the sort of project that, that didn't necessarily need to get finished, and and, and I guess there's, there's there's a certain level of urgency that needs to be uh, injected by the producer. Yeah. But I think when we're in the studio and that, you know, when it came to that, we were in there for three weeks and we recorded it. You know, it's like you, it's all pretty like. 
Like James is great with ideas and with the vocals and that and patience, mm. you know, and he helps with that a lot and I think but once we were all in there together it's like, you know, we all wanna get the job done as mm. well, you know, once you start on it, you know. Mm. Um Alex's uh next choice is uh, ELO Living Thing. Was uh, ELO big in the in the Turner house growing up? I don't think so actually. No. No, no I don't think it was. Um, Our manager is obsessed with ELO, though. But uh, as as presumably budding producers, that's the sort of... Th- th- you've got to have the, a grudging respect to the, I don't know, uh, the, A, the production of uh, Jeff Lynne and also the... Um, how many instruments the guy can play, for crying out loud? That guy's a genius. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's it, I think it's, uh, it's hard not to like a lot of that ELO... You know, like I mean, yeah. There was uh, what, what, to how did that play into this record? I, I mean, there was definitely a moment we, when we talked about like the uh, more discoy string arrangements on mm. like some ELO tunes, mm. and I was interested in how Owen might interpret that and put it. You know, after it goes through his like prism. Mm. Yeah, how that might come out, and that like definitely got mentioned. Like, I don't know how much of an ELO fan Owen Palette is. Like, not much. I would have thought, but like, he, um, but yeah, we we that was definitely referenced for on uh, on certain tunes. Just to, like the idea of him trying to do something like that mm. seemed like it might end up quite interesting. Yeah, so we're looking at through a violin, kind of, the prism, the, the prism of the violin, I suppose. Well, not just, like, but his head, I think, like, mm. you know, obviously there are, like, violins on ELO tunes, but, like, I don't know, Owen's interpretation of, like, an ELO, or, like, a, even, like, some high disco strings, I suppose, is, mm. like, I guess, you know, he does something, like, on, there's a tune called Element of Surprise on the, uh, on the new Puppets record, where, like, I think it's, it's got a sort of a kind of disco colour to it. Mm. Pops, obviously, Matt's in the band and the uh, album appears to be all about dealing with legacy. Is that something you guys uh, sort of think about? Do you, do you worry about what you're leaving behind? We're just taking it each day by <laughs> day at the minute. Yeah, man, yeah. we just go for the headlines. <laughs> Head for the horizon and we don't really care what uh, what is behind. I don't know, I, th- I kind of, yeah. Um... It's a bit, I think it's too, too yeah, I don't it's know. Too soon, too <laughs> for, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know how much interest I have in, like, posterity, mm. really, at all. And making a big statement, you I just do... Well, not, I thought, you know, not not that, but just, like, the yeah, the idea of, like, what I'm... I, like, the idea that people are going to be, like, listening to this music in, like, 20 years even seems kind of, like... Outrageous. Yeah. Know. I mean, don't put that on the back of the album, but I mean... It's, 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 I know, but like... It's I not, don't a, know, not a great top line. Yeah. <laughs> people will not be listening to this in 20 years' time, but it's fine. Yeah, I mean, will people will be listening to music in 20 years. <laughs> we'll have, have you, that discussion. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of uh, Iggy Pop's uh, album? I presume you've all heard it, both heard it. I lo- I, yeah, I think it's great, man. We saw him play a few weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, before the event's coming. With Elders on the drums and... It was uh, exceptional. Would Would you guys ever go for making like a fully blown four man super group? And if so, who would be in it? I know that's a classic radio station question, but I mean, who would you shove well, in there? Just you know, just want to play bass, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> you were, yeah. Um, who'd be in the super group? Miles, The Rock, The Rock, and um, The Rock on drums. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rock on drums and Ian thoughts. Botham on bass. <laughs> Beefy on bass. <gasps> and he could have a bass that shaped like a cricket bat. <gasps> Mate. Uh, uh, Frank Skinner on keyboards. <laughs> I think he'd be up for that. He and, works for Absolute Radio. <laughs> yeah. Skinner on the keys. Kind of, <laughs> what, like, you know, <laughs> Hammond, t- Torina Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> really make it, you know. <laughs> uh, so you guys, uh, I'm gonna and, wrap the... Anna Cassio, though, just for like, so you got like Carice. the old and the new. Yeah, Mini Moog. Where we go from Mini Moog? <sighs> don't know about that. Mellotron. Don't, don't be silly, Pete. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steve. Mel- yeah. Mellotron. Anyone? Um, <laughs> and then who'd be the singer? Uh... Hang on, you guys have got to be involved somewhere. 
We're tour manager. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Merch. Yeah, merch tour manager and merch and like <laughs> in charge of the Leslie. Fixing the Leslie. <laughs> Where's me Tudor? Alex has got it. Uh, we're going to finish off with uh, a little bit of Tears for Fears, Head Over Heels. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for selecting Head Over Heels. By no explanation fears. required. No, ex- yeah. You want to explain it? No, no, man, no, no, no I want to hear what I've said. No, I think I picked that because like I was listening to this and Depeche Mode like, a lot. when we were like mm. writing for this mm. and like it sounds nothing like the, our record and maybe that <laughs> illustrates that point we were making earlier about it's kind of the 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 influences don't aren't so much on the sleeve and mm. it's like kind of reached that idea has sort of reached saturation thanks for listening guys <laughs> this has been the last shadow puppets on absolute radio